I met Princess Diana and uh, she, we just had a little conversation about um, what it's like having an awful lot of attention on you. Okay, hi everybody. Welcome to the third edition in our Ask Patty series of podcasts. Um, and I'll say good morning to Patty straight away. Hi, Patty. Hi, Tony. How are you today? Well, it's a sunny day, so it always makes me feel happy. Yeah, it's a Monday morning and it's springtime, so it's good. Y yes. Yeah, okay. Um, this is a third edition of Ask Patty, and it's a very broad canvas here we've got we had so many questions in which i will thank the fans and followers for they're so interesting but we're going to just it's a general sort of a melting pot today but we will there are some questions we didn't cover in the music one the first podcast and maybe some from the last one as well so we'll just jump straight in and see where it takes us okay All right. so the first question we got today is topical although hopefully we're getting through it it's about lockdown a number of people have asked how how have you coped in lockdown what's been your strategy if you've even had one well as i have a dog this is a very good excuse and reason to go for nice walks for, with him um it's not so nice obviously if it's raining and it's cold um, but that's a really good good reason to have some exercise every day and then I, uh, I start thinking about food. What are we going to have for lunch? Because Rod, my husband, always likes a very nice lunch in order for him to enjoy a glass of wine with it. <laughs> and so this is really why I started doing those, um, those uh, podcasts on, on recipes. Because as time went on, I realized I'm running out of ideas and also I'm bored. And then I thought, well, everybody else must be bored as well. So this is how the podcast was born with that idea. Yeah, and that they were received really well. They were good fun. They were nice and and punchy and relevant, and they, they went down really well. So yes, yeah, so that actually covers another couple of questions um, or the links. One you mentioned um, dog walking, Freddie. Of course, we all love Freddie, um, and you've got some alpacas as well. I've got three alpacas. There's a white one called meringue, brownie coloured one called fudge, and a very dark one called licorice. Now, I don't walk them. <laughs> They're rather stupid creatures, but very amusing to watch. Um, and so they're fun. What they do enjoy is a little bit of sliced up apple. So I give them apple. When they see me coming with a, with a bowl full of apples, they come galloping towards me and then come to a halt, a full stop and wait for me to give them the apples or throw them in the air. Fantastic. And, uh, and that leads nicely into another question. Someone wrote in saying that they're aware that you've, had, you've, you've been a pet lover and you've always had pets. What, who or what has been your favourite pet down the years, Patty? It's very difficult. I'm in love with Freddie. I, I, one of the reasons was I, I never thought I would like dogs. I imagine dogs are too sort of over-emotional. You know, and I think, oh, cats are so cool. They'll come say hello if they feel like it. And maybe that was me. <laughs> uh, you know, sort of, and they're oh, quite aloof, but they're beautiful. They sort of say you're a dog person or a cat person. So, or maybe you can be both. I'm sure loads of people are. But... I think I've changed to being a dog person. I absolutely adore dogs. Yeah, and Freddie is adorable. I've, I've met him many times, and he's, he's a great character. Um, so yeah, we had. We, so we talked about the dog walking. Um, is there any other hobbies that you have that um, perhaps you've developed during lockdown? It was a good opportunity to develop those. Yeah, well, during lockdown, a lot of catalogues came flying through the letterbox and um, cut seed catalogues. So I'm inspired to plant all sorts of vegetables and flowers, etc. And so I ordered all the seeds. They start, they arrived and I started planting them now. And the most magical thing is to see nature working and little seeds from no, what looks like nothing uh, have started to grow. They're about an inch tall now in the greenhouse. I find this so exciting. Exciting and rewarding as well, isn't it? I think a lot of people can relate to that. You have a lockdown, the way they've embraced their outside space or garden, just being able to do that. Uh, yes, it's lovely to be able to do that because after they've started sprouting, I'll pick out the strongest ones and put them in their own little pots. But I have to cross my fingers that Mr. Mouse doesn't appear this year. 
because <laughs> otherwise he'll just eat the lot. How about, we're talking about hobbies, um, photography is more than a hobby to you, but is the lockdown or your time giving you a chance to, horrible pun, develop that? Uh, have you been doing a lot of photography during the time? Well, I've been using my iPhone an awful lot and the, what inspires me is the light, a bit of sunlight hitting something, whether it's a person or a plant or a, or a, a, a reflecting on a lake, on water or through trees. I just can't resist taking photographs. And I've, I found that I you know, captured quite a few lovely um, landscapes. Yeah, yeah. I guess back in the day you'd have had a camera with you, but now sort of the phones and the technology have made carrying a camera almost redundant, haven't they? You know, the, the cameras are <laughs> so good. Yeah, I know. Well, it's so easy. I mean, when I go for a walk, I naturally take my phone with me, not just in case somebody rings or I want to listen to a podcast, but it's in case I need to take a photograph. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, let's... Um, We'll go back to sort of a sort of a music related question. This is an interesting one. Uh, a chat wrote in, I think he may be based in the USA, saying he contributes to a Beatles fan magazine, which is devoted entirely to them drinking tea. Um, it's called The Teetles, can you believe? But, yeah, who, no, who I can't. <laughs> I've seen it, Patty, believe me, it's incredible. <laughs> all the pictures feature, well, you, you're on it as well, all the, all the guys just drinking tea. So the question is, how do you take your tea? And can you remember how George liked his tea for the, the tea tools, please? I like to drink Earl Grey tea. I put the, the tea bag into the mug, boiling water, and let it steep. I don't touch it for about three or four minutes, and then pull the bag out carefully and put a little bit of semi-skimmed milk. Now, George used to go completely crazy if somebody was giving him tea and the water hadn't boiled, if it was just hot water, which used to happen in America quite a lot in hotels. And so he'd demand a kettle so he could have proper tea. And he liked sort of Yorkshire tea. That tea tools um, site, I think maybe on Twitter or whatever, is incredibly interesting. There are so many pictures. Everyone used to, I think people probably drunk more tea. It's, it's all the guys with mugs of tea in Abbey Road and just in various sort of backstage situations. It is it's fascinating, actually. Change the subject again. Someone's written in asking about meditation. Now, I guess most fans will know about um, a trip to India in 68. Did you keep it going, Patty? Do you still meditate now is it important to you yes it is important and i i do meditate now sometimes i i will meditate with maharishi's mantra and other times i will listen to um there are quite a few people online now who are doing meditation classes and you just listen to them and uh, they're really very very good so about 15 minutes in the morning is perfect to set you up for the day Fine, that's, that's good. And again, during lockdown, I'm sure many people have sort of have delved into that, perhaps. You had to have the time and information to do it. I'm sure that's great. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, OK. Sort of following on from that, um, do you think it's best to follow your heart or your mind? I think you follow your... I don't know. You see, it depends on what you're talking about. If you want to buy a flat or buy a house or buy something quite substantial, I think you must follow your your mind. Yeah, the logic, the sense of the sense. Of you have to, because you're investing a lot of money. But then you see, if you're think, if you're about to fall in love with somebody, that also is an investment. But I think you should follow your heart in this situation. Okay, okay. Sage-like advice, there. So thank you very much. <laughs> what was the best piece? Of advice that you ever received and if you can pick that who gave it to you so is that going way back in the day or is it more recently maybe best piece of advice oh dear I must have had some advice but a long time ago it doesn't spring to mind at the moment no. I know yes I've just thought of one you have to remember that sex isn't love somebody said don't mistake sex for love. That's right. It. 
Okay. That's better. Okay, that's better. That sounds good. Okay, um, we're going back to sort of like a Beatles related, Beatles George related um, question here. Um, it's about the guitar called Rocky. I think George probably called it Rocky. So we're going back to the 60s probably. Uh, George's Rocky guitar was painted by you and George together. Do you recall when you did this, not so much the dates, but the, the situation? And I think there's some nail, some very famous nail polish involved here. What recollection have you got about Rocky, Patty? Well, I couldn't believe that George would trust me to help him paint this beautiful guitar. And it made, it made me rather nervous, actually. Um, and I just got out all sorts of different nail varnishes I happened to have. And my first time I touched with my little brush, touched the guitar. I was so, so nervous. But anyway, I carried on and, you know, we had a fun time. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen, I think it was a, a Fender Stratocaster, but um, oh, yeah. Was it, it? Yeah, I think so. I think there's pictures of it, but it, it's well loved out there. You know, it's, it's a well-known instrument. The fans sort of refer to it as if it's almost a person sometimes, you know, Rocky. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. Lovely. Okay, well, I hope that helps a lot of people with that, because, again, it is, I say, a favourite topic. Okay, this is an interesting one. Do you watch The Crown on TV, um, and have you met the Royals or any of the Royals down the ages? Oh, yes, I did watch The Crown and loved it. I met Princess Diana, and I've met Prince Charles, but nobody else. Oh, okay, interesting. How were they? Can you remember? Was it a good experience? Yes, Diana was quite um, new to the scene, and um, she. We just had a little conversation about um, what it's like having an awful lot of attention on you. A couple of sort of questions related or, or interconnected. Um, and again, it's a general one, but I'll throw it at you. Of all the places that you've been, which is your favourite? What is your your favourite place? This is very difficult to answer. I really, really loved Venezuela. I know it's, you can't go there now, but when we could go there, I went on a photographic trip with uh, an organized group of uh, teachers, photographers, and adventurers. And we had the most incredible time. And it was the most beautiful country with so much to offer. And I actually did some hang gliding then. I jumped off the edge of a cliff, wow. with her, clutching my camera. and. It is so beautiful there. Really, really lovely. Yeah. How long ago was that, Patty? Oh, it was probably about 15 years ago. Right. Hand gliding with a camera. It just sounds amazing. Yeah, it was. It was great fun. Um, and sort of like linked into that, another question has come in saying about the UK, England or the UK, what do you love most about England or the UK? You know, what is that sort of quintessential English element that's the closest to your heart? In the summer, I love English gardens very, very much. What is a favourite, or what was, when you look back, the favourite era of your life? Is there one, when you, when you sort of reflect, is there one that stands out? That is so difficult. I think probably I loved sort of like the 70s. I mean, I was very lucky because um, Eric had to live out of England for a year. And he decided that we should live in um, pa on Paradise Island in the Bahamas. And so I was there for a year. And I tell you, it was idyllic. It was absolutely beautiful. And so much fun. And to have the sea on our doorstep with soft, silky sand. It was um, a really joyous, you know, year. Yeah, absolutely. I don't think I'd like, you see, things I don't know if I'd like to live there all the time. I do like England because of the changing seasons. So your 70s, because for 70s, I think um, from, from what I've heard you say, was it was sort of like the rock and roll years with a bit of a difference for you because you were able to go on tour with Eric, weren't you? You were accompanied yes. on, some, on some of the big tours where you didn't do that with the Beatles. You know, I'm guessing you didn't go to many of it, on their, or certainly on their tours. But did you enjoy that sort of rock and roll lifestyle out on the road? I loved it. I loved it. I loved it too much <laughs> because I just would join in and have so much fun every night. And it's actually quite tiring to, yeah. to join a band like that. 
and party with them when you're not actually giving anything yourself. At least they all would go on stage and play and give wonderful music to the audience. Whereas I wasn't really doing that. I was just taking photographs. And um, I could only maybe stand for about half a tour. And, and I'd have to go home thoroughly exhausted. Yeah, I guess, I guess. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's a different world living out of hotels and suitcases sort of sort of every night, you know, a different different day, different city. But did Eric enjoy that? Was that sort of, he enjoyed his, the live performing more than the recording maybe? He loved it. He loved it. He loved being with his friends, his musician friends. Absolutely adored that. And also the road crew as well. He adored, I mean, he, he was just in his element. Yeah, yeah, which is probably the opposite to George. I think was sort of got tired of the Beatles performing really quickly just because they couldn't even be heard. You know, it's a different world in the 60s with the, the technical side of it, with their amplification and, and the whole setup. But I think the Beatles got bored quite quickly, didn't they, with the live performance? Well, you see, it, it just, they, ha they, had very, they did very short performances and they couldn't hear... And, the, and, the, and the, I think the audience couldn't really hear what they were playing that well. It seemed yeah. like a, such a shame if they'd just been quiet and listened to them. The Beatles would have really enjoyed it more, I think. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Ringo um, just did a, an interview on US TV, I think, just a couple of nights ago, which was great. He's looking really well, incidentally. But yeah, he said much the same. He couldn't even hear what the, the boys were playing in front of him, and he was just sort of relying on when they, the movements of their head, you know, to get his time. Yeah. Everything. So, See, that can't be any fun. That's no fun, is it? No, no, I think he got a bit tired. No. Um, yeah, going back to Eric uh, Blackbush, I was reading it the other day, funny enough, about the, the Blackbush concert, which uh, the Bob, with Bob Dylan back in the, the 70s, because you were there, I think, you took some photos. Yes, of that. Yeah, yeah, that was great. So again, talking about sort of eras, someone's been very specific about the 60s here, you just mentioned the 70s, but with regard to the 60s, what do you miss most about the 60s, Patty? I think what I miss most is... The fact that everything was so new, nothing was repeated. We were breaking through into a new era, bringing new music, new fashion, art of every description, not just paintings, but cinematography, photography. And I was aware that this was, this was a very new era and not one that had been copied from another. Yeah. So that was exciting, that yeah. realisation. Yeah, as you say, not just music, but just across the board, it was groundbreaking. And, and you, you mm. can't get that newness back, can you? Once, once you've had it, um, people will try and replicate it or you get new ideas, but you only sort of get that chance once, don't you? And, and certainly you yeah. were there right at the epicentre of it. Okay, um, so that's the 60s. Moving back a little bit from there, uh, one of your followers has asked the question, what was your favourite, or what is your favourite childhood memory? <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, nothing really jumps out. I mean, I hated being sent to boarding school, so I don't really want to talk about that. No, no, not, no it's um, just... It was fun having lots of brothers and sisters. There's okay. always someone to talk to or amuse. And of course, they'd all follow me around. Or they, I all imagined that I was up to something. So I turn around, there's a sort of crew of little people following me. Yeah. <laughs> yes, because you're, you're the oldest, aren't you? Uh, yes, you? I am. Um, another question, moving away. Uh, Yoko Ono, um, you mentioned her, I think, in the last um, recording we did when we were talking about uh, visits to Abbey Road. What was your impression of, of Yoko? Well, I, the thing about Yoko is that she was very quiet and very sort of um, mysterious. And I couldn't really get close to her. She was in a, a position where John insisted that she would be in the studio. And then, of course, when she thought she was pregnant, there was, there was a little bed where she could lie on and not to be disturbed. So she was very much doing what she wanted to do. And we, i.e. me, Jane Asher and, and Cynthia, certainly Cynthia, uh, and Maureen, were not really allowed in the studio. Yeah. So we felt a bit peeved about this, obviously. 
So did you get closer to, or, or did your opinion or your sort of relationship change a little bit after that, like moving into the 70s, or did that not really happen? Yes. No, no, no. We became friends. And in fact, she and John wanted to stay in our house in Isha at one time. I can't remember why. And I don't know where George and I went to. But anyway, we gave them the house. And um, so that was nice. No, we, we were quite friendly. And we still laugh. We speak on the phone. She's always, you know, she's always ready to accept my calls. Lovely. That's good to hear. A lot of fans will love hearing that, Patty, I'm sure. Mm. Um, something I've never asked you, actually. When was the last time you, you saw John? Because he obviously had his travel issues with his green card saga through the 70s and not being able to come back to the UK. When was the last time you saw him? Can you remember? Well, the last time I saw him, I think, was in England. Uh, he came to visit George and I, he and Yoko. And our house was pretty large and rather dark with the lights on to, weren't on. And John and Yoko came bursting through the door to say hello to us. And I think John was really saying that, you know, this is it, the Beatles are all splitting up. And, um, and they were wearing such dark glasses as they walked through. And John was complaining about how dark it was in the house. <laughs> With the shades on, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. then um, I think they went to um, live in America after that. And when they, once they went there, uh, I didn't see them because I had problems going into America as well. And John and Yoko couldn't really come out, otherwise they wouldn't have let them back in. Yeah. And so, yeah, England was the last time I saw him. Okay, yeah, because, of course, was that to do with your... Um, I think it was just almost this time of year just after your birthday when you had to appear in court didn't you after mm. the, the drug bust or whatever was that was yes that a, when yeah. Sar yeah, Sar sergeant pilcher head of the london drug squad in his wisdom decides to come to our house and you know leave lumps of hash around the house and then arrest us yeah. anyway he was brought he was brought to court at the end of the day yes and, yeah um so he got his comeuppance but um what a silly thing to do Anyway, those were the days. Yeah, yeah. But you, so you had a little bit of sort of fallout regarding international travel off the back of that, did you, Patty? That sort of pretty Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. I mean, they wouldn't let me into America unless I had a really good excuse. So I had to, you know, I would say I need to visit my sister. So that was all right. But I could only do, I could only go once a year. Yeah, because John had a sort of a different angle because there's stories of the FBI and even Elvis, I think, being involved, you know, with a bit of a, a bit of subterfuge against him there. So, yeah, perhaps perhaps a bit more involved than yours. But, uh, yes, yeah, but you're, allowed to go, you're allowed in to go on the tours, for example. I suppose we talked about touring with Eric. That was OK, but that was no problem. No, it was difficult to begin with. Um, and then they would allow me so many days and then I would have to leave. Here's a good question. If there was a, a Beatles biopic film, mm. uh, who would you like to play you? Have you got any ideas who you think, yep, she should play Patty Boyd in, in the big movie? Oh, it has to be Taylor Swift. <laughs> <laughs> sign her up, sign her up. You heard it here first, folks. Yeah, um, yes, because, of course, you've, you've worked with Tyler on a, on a magazine um, interview, didn't you, a couple of years yes, ago? Yes, yes. She is utterly divine. Yeah. I'm mad about her. Mm. Yeah, okay, that's, that's, that's good. That's interesting. I can see her doing it as well, Patty. So, yeah, strange, stranger things have happened. I'm sure she's very busy and wouldn't even dream of doing anything like that. But yeah. anyway, you never know. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, so on, on the biopic thing, are you, uh, are you, do you watch these movies? There's been some big sort of rock biopics over the last year or something. Things like Bohemian Rhapsody and Rocket Man, for example. Yeah, I loved those. I thought they were fabulous. Um, I thought Rocket Man was oh, was particularly good. I'm really looking forward to uh, get back the Beatles yeah. recut version of the old documentary, and apparently that's going to be really wonderful, wonderful, yeah. wonderful. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It just I've seen a trailer or it, well, a more a montage as he's calling it, he's put out there, and and the footage. <laughs> It, it, I think we've mentioned before, perhaps in a previous podcast, but it's going to dispel a lot of the rumours that it was all doom and gloom at those times. The guys seem to be having so much fun, you know. They well, just... it's com yeah, that's what I mean. It's completely changed. It's take changing the attitude because the yeah. previous one was really very negative, as yeah. if they all hated each other. 
And then this one is almost the opposite, where they've just selected the happy times. Yeah, it looks stunning for what I've seen on the montage show. Yeah, that's going to be so exciting. Hopefully September, I think that's the word at the moment. So Yes, I think so. I think it's possible for that. Um, there have also been some others. I'm thinking of one particular called Back Beats, which was about Stuart Sutcliffe, particularly in the really early days. Did, yeah. did, did George talk much about those early sort of days, like the Hamburg days and people like Stuart and, and Pete Best? Did, did, did he look back like that very much or was it always forward looking? No, occasionally he'd mentioned how, how fun, but how difficult and how exhausting it was living and playing in um, Hamburg. You see, because the, the owner of the nightclub would just keep giving them blue pills to keep them up all night long. So they were exhausted and they were very happy that they had Astrid and Stuart and Klaus, Klaus to yeah. sort of to hang out with. How about yeah. Pete Best? Did you, have you, did you meet Pete no. Best? No, he was before my time and I think there, George only spoke about him once or twice. Okay. You know, because they were so happy that they'd got Ringo in the band. Yeah. We have had a, a lot of questions here with people just inquiring about the next book. What can you tell us, Patty? What is, as we sit here now towards the end of March, what's the latest on the book? Well, I'm looking for a, a, a new publisher, but I'm working with somebody who is an editor and we're going through photographs and we're putting together a sort of... Uh, just like a, a mini version of the book to see which publisher would enjoy to uh, bring it out. And basically, <clears throat> it's photographs of me and by me. And it goes through a huge range of photographs, you know, starting off from my modeling, early modeling, to more glamorous modeling, to meeting the Beatles, and, you know, and on and on and on until today, really. Because <clears throat> okay. I want to include a lot of travel photographs. Lovely. So it's more a uh, sort of photographic book than the traditional autobiography. Oh, well, it, yes, it's photographic with just the odd anecdotes that are required here and there to explain certain things. But it's mainly uh, photographs. Patty, I think that sort of brings us to a close on this one. We've really covered a lot there, just jumping about right. as well as we do. But I think this one perhaps more than the other two in the series so far. So thank you for that. Um, okay. Just, I will just mention to people, Patty mentioned her um, Lunch in Lockdown series, which were a podcast we did last year. They're still available. They were great fun and got a really good response. If you haven't seen Patty's Lunch in Lockdown series, please take a look on, on Patty's podcast site. And um, perhaps some more ideas to come in the future, Patty. We'll see how it goes. Yeah, see how it goes. Okay, Patty, thank you as always. It's, it's been a pleasure, so much fun, and I've learned stuff as well, you know, and uh, yeah, it's been lovely. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.